Well, I've gotten a few requests to go over the guitar arsenal, so I thought I would start with the acoustics and maybe we'll all learn a little something about acoustic guitars. So this is my primary one, which you've seen in like 80% of the videos I make. This is a Taylor GA3. The GA stands for Grand Auditorium, which is the shape, which in my opinion is, after playing for a while, I've gravitated towards feeling is the best shape for me. When I first started off, I was like strictly just dreadnoughts and I like those bigger body guitars and the deeper sound. But uh, now I think I've kind of just gravitated towards a more balanced one, and uh, the Grand Auditorium style is pretty cool. The three in the GA3 stands for the wood the Taylor uses. So it's a Sitka spruce solid top and Sapelli back and sides, which kind of gives it like that, that balanced tone that I was talking about. Uh, some of the Taylors are a little bit brighter, but I kind of like the combination of these woods. They don't make the GA3 anymore. The closest thing you can get is the 314. The main thing that some people kind of don't like, but I really like, is that it doesn't have a cutaway. It's a full bodied one, and it also doesn't have electronics. Uh, guitar, acoustic guitar electronic pickup systems, is kind of like my sword to fall on. I'm not a big fan of really any of them, with a few exceptions, but I always, always prefer the sound of a microphone acoustic guitar to like a quarter inch pickup system. Uh, I, I realize that there are some situations where it's kind of impossible not to use a quarter inch, but that's just my own personal thing. So for my primary guitar, the Taylor stays in tune all the time. I've had it for probably four or five years now. I've never had to get it set up once. Uh, the quality control on Taylor is just fantastic. Full solid wood guitar, no electronics, all natural, organic, makes me feel the music that much more. Taylor GA3. So I guess the opposite of the Taylor is this Cordoba 55 FCE. So I knew I wanted to get kind of a, a nylon string guitar to complement uh, the steel string, like the Taylor. And this is just like one of my favorite nylon string guitars that Cordoba's ever made. Uh, the Gypsy Kings use one just like this. It has a European spruce solid top and flamed maple back and sides, which I think is like really gorgeous. Uh, so yeah, this is probably a, the prettiest guitar I have. Now, it's more of a flamenco style guitar. Uh, you can tell by the, the body. The, it's, a, it's a really thin, light guitar. It has the kind of flamenco pick guard type thing going on here. Not the greatest flamenco player in the world, but I really like it because it's so much easier on your hands as like an alternative to something else. You can be a lot more flexible with uh, kind of like how you play a nylon, and it just has a different feel. So definitely, if you've never played a nylon string guitar, Check it out because it's a whole world of difference, which you might like, you might not like, but it's good to be able to go both ways. So as you can see, this does have a cutaway and also has electronics. And out of all the electronics that I've heard, this one actually is probably my favorite one. Like it really doesn't sound half bad. It kind of maintains a lot of the body. And I'm not really hating on electronics just in general, but I always kind of feel you lose a little bit of the body and the warmth of anything when you go that way. That's why I always prefer mic stuff. A lot of people do kind of like a hybrid setup where they'll mic it and they'll go direct out. This is my own personal opinion. There's a lot of great systems out there. But uh, yeah, so this does have electronics, even though I don't use it that much. Uh, it has kind of like a thing where you can kind of like blend. There's two microphones in here. There's the regular pickup one, and there's a piezo pickup. Uh, you'll see that it's not a totally uncommon feature on the nicer classical flamenco style guitars. But yeah, this one uh, is definitely really great. So this guy right here is a Breedlove Passport C250. Again, it's a very similar size to the Taylor GA3, but this one also has a cutaway, and it has electronics even though they don't work. I bought this used just because I needed something to kind of drive around and just keep in my car because I teach a lot and I'm on the road a lot too. Uh, I would never recommend keeping a guitar 
in your car, unless it's for a short amount of time, especially like I live in Florida where it's super hot. Uh, but basically this is just kind of like my beater guitar that I keep in my car at all times. So one of the reasons you don't want to keep it in the car is because there's a lot of glue that holds these guitars together. And if it gets super hot, the glue is going to melt and things will shift out of place. So you can kind of tell if you look inside, uh, part of the glue has melted, but I mean, this is kind of something that I always need a guitar around, so I do keep it in my car and whatever. But yeah, uh, Breedlove is a great brand that probably is a little bit underrated in the grand scheme of things. I think they make amazing guitars for the price. This is a cedar top with mahogany back and sides. So it kind of has maybe like a warmer sound, uh, especially even considering its size. But again, this is another one that I've never even had to have set up and it plays great, even though I kind of abuse it a lot. So yeah, Breedlove Passport is definitely a really cool guitar to have. You can get these used. They had a, they made a lot of them, so they still have them around used for like really reasonable prices. Check it out. Cordoba guitar I have is the C7. Uh, this is a really cool one and the story behind this is I was teaching guitar lessons at this guitar shop and it was a cool situation for me because I could get stuff at cost, whatever the guy got in. And I really had no intentions to buy a full bodied classical guitar because I had the 55 FCE. But I was just sitting down waiting for a student to get here and I just played this. And from the very first time I played a chord on it, I was like, I've got to have this guitar. It's like a really reasonably priced one too. So definitely check out any of the Cordoba C series. This is a C7, it's like the upgrade to a C5. The Cordoba C3 is also like a really cool one. Uh, but yeah, there's really not a lot of features. Again, there's no cutaway, there's no electronics. It's just a good full bodied sounding classical guitar. <laughs> collection would be complete without a Martin and this is a 0018. Now this is technically a vintage guitar and the story behind this is that it was like my great uncles who had it, never really played it, he got super old to the point where he couldn't even play it, it just really just sat in a case forever. He heard I was like getting into more guitar stuff and uh, he just gave it to me so it was pretty sweet. Now one thing I want to talk about vintage guitars is that there's a lot of people think that vintage is always better, right? And in a lot of ways it is. Usually uh, if it's well made and it's made of good tone woods, the woods will open up and it'll sound better the older it gets, right? Some of the best guitars I've ever played are vintage guitars. They're like I played a 19, 1963 Gibson Hummingbird, which is an amazing guitar. I regret not being able to get it at the time. I played like a 1980 Martin D35, which is one of the best guitars I ever played. But the point I'm trying to make is that that's not always the case. If it's not a really well, ta well taken care of instrument, there can be some bad things to happen to it. And this is actually kind of a good example of that. Like, uh, it sounds decent enough, but it's got some issues for sure. The action is super hard to play. Uh, I try to get it adjusted. I've taken it to a bunch of different setup guys and stuff like that. And this is the best they could get it playing because uh, there's a lot of cracks in it. Even though it wasn't... Like you'd think it would have been well taken care of just being in a case in like a decent environment the whole time, but because it was never taken out of the case, it started developing these cracks and you can kind of see the pickguard is a little bit warped right here. 
and I was going to just get it replaced, but the pickguard is actually one of the only things keeping this guitar together because there's a huge crack underneath it. So it's got some tuning issues and stuff too. Uh, the tuners are kind of starting to go, one of them just popped off and it's kind of hard to stay in. So the point I'm trying to make is vintage isn't always better. You kind of have to have like a good eye and a good feel for it. So I would hate to see somebody spend like a ton of money kind of sight unseen on a vintage guitar just because they, they kind of want like an old school thing. A lot of times that can be really great because there's something to like the history behind an instrument that's like super old. But really, there's a lot of things about modern guitars that I actually prefer. I think the, the well-made ones anyways, they stay in tune better. Uh, the, there's a lot of technology that goes into the setup and the neck and the, neck and the bracing and all that stuff. So uh, really, point is, not every vintage guitar is a great guitar. Some of them are amazing, some of them not so good. But uh, yeah, the, the argument between modern and vintage kind of gets overblown a little bit sometimes.